and three quarter pounds to stage the crash. One of the containers was put on the railway track and the train driven into it. James Wilkinson was there to see it happen. Demonstrators who broke through the safety fence delayed the test for five minutes. But the train, a Type 46 diesel locomotive, was soon on its way from its siding eight miles away, accelerating to a speed of nearly 100 miles an hour. The 50-ton flask had been carefully laid across the track. 2,000 specially invited guests watched from a safe distance. As the train approached, the four-year research program reached its climax. Now for a closer view of the crash. The slow motion camera shows the train's death throes even more clearly. The computer had predicted that the train, the flask, would be carried up to 200 yards beyond the impact point. In the event, they didn't get quite that far. The flask ended up here, battered but virtually undamaged. The train itself was a total write-off. Careful checks on the pressure inside the flask showed that there hadn't been the slightest leak. The CEGB were delighted. These flasks are ultra, ultra safe. And uh, people shouldn't worry at all about the transport of spent fuel. The general public really ought to be satisfied. I mean, it's... Uh, it's been expensive, but I think they ought to be satisfied, and, and that makes it worthwhile. But some opponents are still nickel. It's the best flask they have. It's obviously been very carefully checked beforehand, and so there is no question of any uh, human error problems and so on, which, which I personally believe would be more likely to cause a, a breach if anything was. The CEGB are, however, convinced they've proved their point. They say if this doesn't reassure their critics, then nothing will program reached its climax. Now, now for a closer view of the... 